that's me, Hollywood in the hood. Listen, if you love and respect what we're doing here, what we've accomplished, you know, help us to continue, man. Go ahead and make a financial contribution here at the website, which is a donation. Any amount, whether big or small, it all helps to keep shining a light on the stars that we are, know, love, and aspire to be. So, so go ahead and, and send whatever you can send. We really appreciate that. I'm right here right now with Sashin Divine, yeah. Sakina Wellness yeah. Center. Yeah. Now, before we went to the break, I was asking, you know, about the inception of Shekinah Wellness Center, and you were going to speak on how you started it at the onset of the pandemic. Yeah. Now, I got it. That begs the question. Um, was it a necessity thing out of the pandemic or you had these aspirations beforehand and just popped like that? Um, I definitely had the aspirations, you know, before, you know, when you ask, you ask me about, you know, people that have sown into me. And so I have this um, article. So 14 years ago, you know, someone took a, a magazine article and the article was about a woman that had a wellness group and um, they t put my picture, you know, on that article and gave it to me and I kept it. Right. And then 14 years later, that was my reality. And I went back to that picture and I thought, how amazing is that? You know, like how amazing is that? So, you know, the seeds were definitely planted, you know, yeah. a while ago and it was just, it was just time. Well, yeah. I mean, yeah. did you, did you all, one can't help but think like, well, it may be a great need for this too, right about now with everything going on, how uh, the so-called disease is ravaging people around the world. You know, it, it was actually a number of things. It was the pandemic and then being a black woman, you know, my first love is for my people. You know, okay. I'm a black woman. So, you know, my first love is for my people. And the fact that we um, rank first in every disparaging health category was my motivation. And it just so happened that at that time, you know, there was this pandemic that um, people were afraid of. And in my mind, when you know a storm is coming, you don't cower, you don't hide, you prepare. Yeah. Right. And so it was a time where my people needed to know, you know, how to prepare for this storm because, you know, popular media didn't have anything for us. You know, wash your hands, maybe wear a mask, but, you know, you didn't have an understanding of how to um, treat, you know, or how to um, protect you know, from, you know, the inside out. So I wanted us to have that information. Okay. Well, yeah. Did you uh, take advantage of the programs that the government set out here for people? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to put this, I'm going to put this play down, put it together since absolutely. this is what I do. Absolutely. I mean, why not? You this know, is what I do. Why so not? I'm going to put after, the play together. You after know? 400 years of building the country, I mean, yeah. you know, it was, <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, right. I'm right. just saying. Yeah, right. absolutely. It so, was time for us to get a little get back. Now, now that it seems that this uh, pandemic, some people call it pandemic. <laughs> now that it seems that it subsided a little, or people are getting a little used to the, you know, the norm out here. You know, has your business picked up? Has it receded? Is it is it a uh, at a stalemate, or what is it like right now? Let me tell you, I'm just getting started. Just so. getting started. <laughs> I am just getting started. My first location is at 5131 Warrensville Center Road in Maple Heights. My goal is to not just have wellness centers throughout the city of Cleveland, but wellness centers throughout the country. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So can you describe for me, you know, the functionality of Shekinah Wellness Center? And absolutely. Absolutely. So it's, um, I, I, I set the business up. I always say that I must have a little bit of ADHD because I like to have, you know, multiple things going on. So, you know, as an entrepreneur, so I'm going to talk business side, you know, we always talk about having multiple streams of income. Okay. And so um, just from a business development standpoint, when I developed my business, I made sure that it had legs, you know, okay. so I'm not waiting just for one thing to kind of pop or happen. So with that, um, I sell, you know, waist trainer shape where I do natural body contour. So it's important for me to show women how to take care of their bodies in a natural way. I know we have a lot of sisters that go out and they have surgery 
or I even have garments after the surgery to make sure that they heal. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know, so it, so you it, got the waist trainers for sale. Y'all yeah. hear that, ladies? Y'all <laughs> trying to train up? Yeah, I do you the know, waist trainers. So I see he has it for you. <laughs> I'm a master body sculptor. So what that means Me is too. that. <laughs> I use, you know, natural means to contour our bodies and help us. You know, okay, you got that. to give me an example because I could be, you know, man is all day long, but we really want to know at least one example. Um, so an example, like we use, you know, I use wood instruments. So I don't know if you've heard of wood therapy. So you, go ahead. Yeah, so wood therapy is like Colombian wood tools. And we use those to um, shape and form the body. That was the kind original of freaky, way. but okay. <laughs> okay. The, the original oh, wait, wait, way. No, reflexologist has wood tools. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. we just use ours on the stomach. Oh, so okay. you um, on the stomach. Yeah, yeah, or back. You know, the back area. I also have machines that do what's called like cavitation, laser lipo, um, some vacuum therapy. So I do that, and then non-invasive butt lifts. So like, if you don't want to go and get a BBL, but you want a natural way to achieve that look. And we can do that through, you know, natural means wow. called vacuum therapy. So yeah. I do that. I also do sauna bag detoxes. So if you want to like detoxify your body, you know, let those toxins out, lower your blood pressure, um, control your heart health. You can come and do things like that. Um, I do G5 massages, which is an amazing way. Goes a little deeper than a practitioner's hand. G5 It's a massage. G5. I've uh -huh. never heard of that. Y'all heard of that? <laughs> I got to see what yeah. that's saying. You know what I'm so saying? It, it stimulates your lymphatic system, you know, yeah. it helps you to relax. So I do that as well. I told you I'm a master herbalist. I do Reiki. I'm an energy healer. We have yoga classes and men do yoga too. So, you know, ways for us to learn how to reduce our stress. You know, we're creatures of habit. So we tend to move the same body parts. Did you know yoga is medicine? So like before there was traditional medicine, we knew how to put our body in um movements and shapes you know to heal i keep telling myself i'm gonna teach myself that <laughs> you should come YouTube and be my guest places. come and be my I'm guest take you up on that. we do yoga at the studio every sunday morning at 10 30 and every tuesday evening at 6 30. it's an amazing practice all of you all come and enjoy yoga on me yeah. it's an amazing practice are, are you amazing. a parent i am i have two children i have two kids i have a 14 year old son and a 13 year old daughter. I have my kids late. <laughs> well, are they into some of the same things? You know what? It's really, really interesting. You know, they say a prophet is never a prophet in their own home. Mm, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's so, yeah so, mom, you do that. I don't, I don't want to. So, but it's really interesting because although they push away from it, I know as a mother, you know, um, that you when you see. you plant a seed, it doesn't, you know, come to fruition overnight. Yeah. And I'm I'm fine being that example and planting that seed yeah. because I know when the time comes, they'll make the right decision. What about the herbs, though? You know, they're catching on to that, though. So um, I try to do it through osmosis and like get them involved in the business, you know, making supplements, you know, doing different things. And of course, during the pandemic, you know, all the elderberry, all the, you know, so they, they have to take them, you know, the black so seed oil. So products that you sell at Shekinah Wellness? I absolutely do. So Talk about some of your products. So um, my herbal products, I'm a master herbalist and I love to do herbal blends. So what you won't find in my center is like single herbs. Because herbalism is not a single herb for a single illness. It's not that. You know, that's what Western medicine proposes. So um, I like to do custom blends. So if I give you a respiratory blend, you're going to have about four or five herbs, you know, to help with that respiratory issue. So I like to do things like that. You can come in the wellness center and you can get um, herbs for respiratory issues, insomnia, high blood pressure, you know, your diabetes. Um, you can get things for your heart health. You know, I have the sea moss, the bladder it's like sectioned off the wellness center. So it's such an amazing space. You have to come and see it. When you first come into the door, there are shelves, you know, on my wall. And you can pick things, you know, off of the wall. Um, when individuals come and they talk to me about custom things, then we kind of sit down. I do a consultation. I may have to walk away and develop a regimen for that person. So they may come back later and pick those things up. But I try to keep some things on my shelves for common things that i know that we do so you have herbal blends what other kind of things mm -hmm. so um so in the space you have the herbal blends you have your black sea oil 
you know, you have your supplements, you know, I have things for um, men's health, you know, for your practice. Are you are in Maple Heights? I am in Maple Heights, 5131, Warren's Books in a Row, Maple Heights. i um, been there since October. Um, and right before the break, you had asked if uh, men come. And you know what I think is so interesting? I have so many men that will reach out and they'll ask me, do you have things for men? So and, do you have things for men? Well, you know, um, that question always stuns me because wellness is for everybody. And so to me, the fact that men don't automatically make that connection is a little unbelievable. But I'm here to, you know, help you all navigate, yeah. you know, through Thank that. You. So, that. so yeah, absolutely. Herbalism is for everyone. Wellness is for everyone. Like, Self-care like, is for everybody. You got to know men are kind of probably... A little apprehensive coming to women about the problems because they look to buy the woman. So it's kind of hard to go to them with your problem. I could understand that. You know, I could definitely understand that. But I think, you know, when it comes to dealing with our problems, hopefully we will be comfortable with somebody like ourselves. Yeah. You know, and I know, <clears throat> excuse me, that historically our men don't go to the hospitals. You know, they don't go to the doctors, you know, but you all have to trust somebody. <laughs> you had to get like this, uh, you know, um, Sashin, you know, I just don't, you know, you, you 12 years old, 13 years old, I don't <laughs> see, you, you know, you had to get like this. Well, I guess everything is a journey, you know, like, and I always say my journey led me here, you know, but it was day by day, step by step, but it was always there. Like it was never a time when it wasn't, you know, was I always tuned in, tapped in, you know, not as, um, you know, I direct mean, you or as sharp as I am now. To other things like this, to be into holistic health, you got to be a special person. So actually, you know, my first career was accounting. So early on, you know, it was more. Oh, you're on that business. math tip. <laughs> I am. Okay, I am. early so on it was the business. Early right? on it was the business. So even then it all it, went in, together. In, in, in that world. So in that world, I was account an accountant. Um, I worked as a recruiter for years um, as a healthcare travel nurse recruiter, business development. So I had to develop relationships with hospitals. So I worked in Western medicine, you know, for a while. Wow, that's a big transition. <clears throat> yeah, I worked in me Western medicine for a while. And then I went into, I had my own home healthcare company and I hated that business. I absolutely hated yeah, it. Go and wipe butts and. Well, I employed people. people that did. Like I, ah, I, I, see, get it right. <laughs> get it right. I only wipe the few butts. I only wipe the few butts. I've Let's never. Get right. I've, I've honestly, you know, I have so much appreciation for people that do that. Like okay. that's not my background, but again, more from the business, you know, development standpoint, that was what I did. But people don't want help at that stage. Oftentimes, you just want help continuing to do what you've always done. Yeah. And it was really was hard. Going, it was like a dead end. Yeah. And it was thing. really hard to um, have really committed people to continue to do that. And I didn't like the fact that my success was so closely tied to people that didn't look at things in a successful manner. Wow. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. So um, I chose to, you know, Hold come on, you out of that business. You could have dwelled in that for so long till you lost your weight, but you figured your way out. Up so, up, up you know, in, in holistic wellness, you know, one of the things that we always propose is intentionality, you know. Like so, having a purpose. And always being aware. So, you know, one of the things that causes us to go around in circles is just not being aware. We're not aware of you know what's going on we're not aware when spirit talks we're not aware when we should be um, when we should pivot you know when we should change we're not aware when situations aren't the best for us but in holistic wellness when you're tuned in tapped in when you're taking care of your body when you're eating right when you're meditating when you you your intuition becomes so much stronger the third eye is open and so there's a certain um intuitiveness guidedness that you get to experience in this walk so how do you nurture yourself to continue the route you're going? Um, by the things that I just said, you know, it, again, it's not just a business. Everything that I propose to other people, I do. You know, I wake up in the morning, I'm always in gratitude. You know, before my feet hit the ground, I'm just saying thank you. Thank you for today. Thank you for the conversation. You're not waking up like, man, shoot, you know. <laughs> I'm, I'm mad. 
I hate this. No, you know what I do? I wake up, I'm excited. You know, I say, thank you for the abundance that's going to come to me today. Like, I wake up every day excited about what the day brings. juice also and things um, like that? Nature? So, I'm, I'm a vegetarian. Um, I'm most not a vegan. time. I'm not a vegan. So, you because, do dairy products. Dairy um, I will, you know, from time to time. In my opinion, I think it's better to do natural than artificial. A lot of vegans, um, unless you're a whole plant-based vegan, are ethically opposed to eating meat. They're not necessarily making the best nutritional choices. And so that's where education comes in. We can't hop on every bandwagon. You know, some things, again, are clever marketing. And so we have to yeah, understand yeah. the science the of truth. things and what's really going on. Yeah. And so a lot of times we are accustomed to just being force fed, but we don't take the time to study and understand for ourselves. Do, do you feed the home, your home circumference? Do you feed the home <laughs> vegetarian style? My kids don't trust me at all. Every time I cook wow, something, you got all those plant-based like, meals. They're, they're they're you got like, them plant-based sausages. Them I, don't do, I don't do that because it's do so much sodium. Absolutely not. That's do again, that. oh, no, you, you have to turn those meat. labels over. Those fake meats, those are chemical meats. They have carcinogens in them. you like, the, no, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Absolutely but I'll do not. things like, no, no beyond, absolutely not. Beyond. I do walnut meat. Like, I'll make meat out of walnuts. You know, I'll make meat out of um, mushrooms. But no, I am whole plant-based. No. Cashews make meat out of cashews. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So they don't trust me. They're like, you know, is this really this? You know, I'm like, it's what this, difference this. does it make? Like, you like it. Eat it. You know? Yeah. So they don't trust me. But wow. but yeah, I interjected, you know, they've never eaten um pork, but my kids do eat beef, they eat chicken, you know. Um, and I'll cook it, you know, but as I cook it, I always tell them, you know, like, well, you know, like this was a dairy cow first, and they kept it pregnant his whole life, and then when it passed out, they took it to the slaughterhouse, and that's what you're eating. <laughs> they it, told me it, I ruined everything. That's how I serve it's it. Home base reflective of the Shekinah Wellness Center. Say that again. Is, is home base reflective of your wellness? Center. Absolutely. Again, I like have to. Like when you come to your house, when you come as I come to Sashini House, I feel like it's an extension of the wellness. Center. Absolutely, absolutely. I try to be in that space all the time. You know, I try to be in that space all the time. So, um, you know, it, especially you know with my children, especially in my home. You know, it's important again that I model because I remember being young and looking at people, and I do not respect the hypocrite, you know, like you can't get up in front of people and say something and, and, you know, propel a certain, you know, idea forward. And that's not really who you are. That makes you ineffective. And so that's not what I'm going to be in my walk. You know? huh, that's not what I'm going to be in my walk. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We kind of got to kind of adapt that type of the way to see we have that's to. not going to be in my walk. Yeah. Again, you have to be intentional. You know, and so I have to think about this before, you know, I'm a Capricorn, so I'm a very sure footed creature, you know, I'm very sure footed. So I think about, you know, I map those things out and um, yeah, you know, that's how you manifest. That's how, we're creators, right? You know, yeah. we're, we're creators. And so you're going to do it whether or not you realize it or not, you're going to cre create intentionally or unintentionally. And I would much rather be an intentional creator. Now speak a little bit towards Reiki because I hear, it, I hear mm -hmm. about it all the time mm -hmm. and I don't want to assume anything. Can you speak to it? Sure. It so practice? Sure. So Reiki is um, most often understood as a relaxation technique. So a lot of hospitals you'll notice have adapted, you know, Reiki for like cancer patients and people that are in chronic pain. Um, because one of the things that it does, again, it just relaxes you. So when a person lays on my table, um, I'm going to make sure that they understand and practice some breathing techniques. You know, most people fall asleep on my table, honestly, during that 45 minute Reiki session. And so um, while they're sleeping or awake, eyes closed, um, I am just kind of um, giving you an energetic massage, so to speak. And so our energy um, actually moves in a circular direction. And so I'm able to kind of tap into um, the way your energy flows and to help it either open up and release those blockages. Um, I can usually tell when I'm close to you, like if you have pain in your body, um, I can normally feel those things. So when you were asking me, you know, about that, so mm -hmm. I feel it. And then my job is to tell you what I felt or what I saw. And so um, most of the time when I do that, people, they know, cause you know, it's just kind of dead spot on. Wow. 
that's yeah. you got to be courageous to do that too you know what that's that you know that has that is my prayer at this stage in my life i pray for bravery i pray to be courageous and um i pray for strength yeah that, yeah are you a religious person um i was raised religious because um, I, I, what I, reason why I ask that because it seemed to me like when you get into those high sciences that you practice, it like goes out of the realm of absolutely uh, not. Religion. God is science. You know what I'm saying? Science is just an attempt to understand what God has done. So they go hand in hand. You know, um, I'm not religious long any longer. I was raised religious, but again, the more you know, you know, we have to understand that before the diaspora, there wasn't a Jesus, you know, there wasn't a Baptist, right. there like wasn't a- one with the universe. Yeah, yeah. And yourself. so absolutely to tap into our true power and authority, we have to go back to that place because those other things right. were put there to weaken us, not to right. strengthen us. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when you see things, uh, when you see in this lifestyle that's not conducive to, health and wellness and happiness and joy and prosperity and you see what's going on out here in the world you think you can change things by the way you're doing with your wellness center so you know how i like to look at it when you look at the world think about i think about radio stations because everything is frequency everything is frequency you have so many radio stations can you listen to all of them should you listen to all of them like you have to decide what station you want to be tuned into, right? Right. So certain things, I'm not tuned there. Okay. Yeah. I'm I'm not there. You're not there. You're not it doesn't there. affect me. You know, like it's just not a part of my experience. Yeah. Don't know nothing about. You listen to music. You enjoy music? Um, I do enjoy music. I do enjoy music, but I'm very particular because yeah, again, I, I, music that's why is I, frequency. I, yeah. So have you ever noticed, like, if you put on sad songs, how are you going to feel? Yeah. You're going to feel sad. Yeah. You know, when you're about to go out and you want to get what you're going to do, you're going to put on some music to make you some music and things like that. You know, it's, it's frequency. It's designed to make you feel a certain way. Yeah. So I have to put on things that um, align with my frequency. Like rap. <laughs> yeah, rap yeah. make you feel a certain yeah. way. It's music, it's all in the music. Like on, like on the way over, I usually listen to music, but I really didn't want to talk because my mind wasn't there, like yeah. you said. Yeah, I've, I've learned to, you know, turn the radio off and sometimes I sit in silence because that's the way that I can download, you know, information. Um, I do like, you know, some neo. Are you heavy into the ancestral plane? Um, it took me a while to get there, but um, absolutely, I have learned to thank the ancestors and include them into my journey. I reach out, I ask for help. I know that, um, you know, who do we think our angels are? You know, like some white people that we don't know. You know, like in some well, I look white at them as people or... that you run into in, in your life. I mean, you know, we, our ancestors are our ancestors for, you know, a reason, a reason yeah. you know, and so um, they will always guide and protect us. Yeah, yeah, that's dope. So hold on. So any manuscripts in your near future? Like, oh, you know, um, it's so interesting that you said that because um, oftentimes I do um, a lot of speaking engagements. I give a lot of events at the wellness center, you know, like brunches. Um, and I tell a lot of stories, you know, I tell my story oftentimes. And so um, the last time I did, you know, people were like, that sounds like a book, you know. And so I'll just say that you, you know, never know exactly what life has in store for you. And I'm here for it all. Yeah. So when you, when you had your children, you know, you said they're 14 and 15. They're uh, 14 and 13. 14 and 13. So were you looking forward to all of this? Like, I'm going to bring these babies in this world. I'm going to teach them what I know. I'm going to set this up for them. I'm going to plant these seeds. Was it that type of thing? Or did you have to grow into that role with your children? Or what? Um, a little bit of both. You know, like I have my kids at 34 and 36. And I love this story. Like when why, I have my so? I always said, because I'm an intentional creator. I had always said I wanted to be 35 when I had my first child. I was 34. 
You waited. <laughs> you listened to Grandpa or Unc or somebody was like, Tashin, now you know you got to grow up first. You got to get a few things popping first. You know, I, you never, I never wanted to say that I grew up with my kids. That wasn't, that just wasn't something I wanted to say, you know. Um, but then I had my own issues, you know, being able to um, carry a child, you know. So before I had my kids, I had two ectopic pregnancies. And so that's where, you know, the I egg, don't know what that means. Well, the egg gets trapped in the fallopian tube. Um, and so you can't carry that child to turn because it would just, as it grows, it would make the tube bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So it puts, you know, so your, you your, them. so my first two yeah. were ectopics. They um, removed the tube and then they tied the other. So technically I didn't have tubes to be able to carry a child. So I remember the head of university told me that I would not be able to have kids naturally. So I'm not a conformist and I don't believe what other people right. tell me, right? right? So I We just, kept at it. We kept at it. So what I you know, I, I went to the place where I go when 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 people tell me things aren't possible and that's the God of my understanding, right. you know? And so I said, well, you know, you said, you're no respecter of persons. And if I believe you'll give me and, you know, and so I have both of my children naturally, you know, ah, <laughs> ah, both, after have, being told you would never have them mm -hmm. in a, in a regular setting. Mm -hmm. Wow. That is amazing. So again, the things that I share with people, it's not things that I think it's things that I know, you know, how did you, uh, get past that mentally where you was it leaning on your faith um no so how did you get past? because that can be de debilitating to anyone you know when i talk about you know like um when you ask me the question about the examples and the things that i've seen like i was raised by my great grandmother and she was like a couple generations post-slavery you know my mom had me really young and so she would always talk to me about how god would do miracles and how you know, they didn't have things and somebody would show up and these things would happen. And I used to ask her, like, well, why don't these things happen now? And she would always say to me, because people don't believe.